Hey guys, today we're back at the shop. We're gonna be doing the piston ring gaps. I'm gonna show you as detailed as possible the different steps you're supposed to do to gap them properly and make sure you won't have any damage to the cylinder block, to the sleeve or the pistons. So all of them are here in different packages. I just separated them. So I went with these pistons. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Wiseco, Wiseco. I'm really not sure to be honest. They're all balanced. Uh, the only difference, they they vary from a 0 0.003 grams from each. So they're pretty much perfectly balanced. And uh, yeah, so it's not the OEM compression rate. This, instead of an 8.5, I went with a nine. It's nothing drastic. It's nothing really drastic, just a little difference. I did keep the OEM bore size, which is 83 millimeter. I didn't overbore it or anything. I wanted to keep it that way. Um, I do know that there, it's very popular to overbore them and have oversized pistons and stuff like that. Uh, for racing, for track use, for drag use, yeah, obviously you would go and get a bigger displacement. Uh, the issue would be that even though these are darkened sleeves, so they're, yeah, they're forged, iron and everything, uh, they would get theoretically thinner, which means they would be closer to the coolant. Uh, and that would also lead to hotter temps during traffic or when you're stopped. Even while, while driving the car, actually, and not all the cases, but in traffic and stuff like that, it's always the case. And uh, since I want that car to be not a daily, perfectly daily, but still like, be able to drive it in normal conditions, in traffic and not have to worry about anything. I went with the OEM spec, which is 83 millimeter. I did not overboard them. So here you can see there's the piston, there's a small pin that usually goes in there. And here you have the small little clips that hold the pin inside. And we also have the different piston rings as well. So in that case, we have uh, you have two that are a bit thicker than the others. Uh, the more metallic, chromy looking one is the top ring, and the second one, which has a matte black gloss, um, a more matte gray black look, uh, is the se the second ring. And then you have the these all three of them and they are for the oil so if you see here so you're you're supposed to like put them that way and it's supposed to act as a sandwich if you want and it's for the oil so i'm gonna show you how to gap them and how to properly install them in the piston as well and make sure you have the proper clearances so one very important thing to keep in mind is that whenever you are gapping them, make sure that first of all, if you have darted sleeves or aftermarket sleeves that are honed, that way they are perfectly equal in diameter all the way down or up. And the other thing that's important is to label every kit you're doing. So let's say I'm picking that one up for cylinder one, I'm gonna make sure to always re-put all this the piston and the rings in the cylinder one. I'm not gonna swap them once everything's gapped and everything's installed. This one's gonna go in first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. That's simply the way I'm gonna do it. And uh, I'm not gonna label them because I know that's how I'm gonna put them. But uh, if you are not sure and you tend to forget or something, just make sure you label them because you are supposed to put them in that, in that specific order. Also, another thing is that the so like I told you, you have the two main compression rings. So the, the second compression ring should always be uh, a bit bigger, or should I say more uh, that the gap, the gap should be a bit bigger than the top one. Uh, it's gonna help reduce uh, uh, top ring flutter or lifting. Uh, and it's gonna help you just have a better engine running more smoothly and everything. There's also different ways that you can 
measure and calculate the, the exact gap that you need for the piston rings. In my case, I already got a chart and instructions, very specific instructions as well. I already, I already wrote the sizes that I need and I already know the instructions uh, by heart by now. They are very straightforward, but the, the main thing to keep in mind, at least for this kit, is that for the top and second compression ring, you can see, I'm not sure if the camera is gonna pick it up. I'm gonna try and zoom. So if you look here, there is a writing here on both of them. So you want, whenever you're installing them, let's say that's the top of the engine and the bottom, you want these facing up. So however you're installing them, you want the writing here, that to be up. In some cases, you have small notches, small circles, small dents, not dents, sorry, but like indents in them. Um, it really depends from the manufacturer of your kit or your rings, exactly. And um, it's not the case for the oil rings. You have to keep in mind that whenever you are installing the top and the second compression ring, um, most of the time, since they are a bit thicker and stronger, and you do not want to bend them, uh, you're gonna use a piston um, piston tool like a something to hold them and spread them perfectly evenly without breaking them and to install them on the pistons and you always want to work your way from the bottom to the top which means you're gonna put the bottom ones here the focuses there we go you're gonna put the bottom ones and then you're gonna go up because if you do put the first one, you don't have to, but it's gonna give you more of a headache. If you put the first one and try to put the second and third, etc., you're gonna see it's a bit more gap that you have to spread the piston rings uh, and you always wanna avoid spreading them. You wanna spread them as low as possible and as little time as possible too. It's very important to check if your pin like uh, i'm not sure the exact term for it in english i'm sorry but that that holds the connecting rod with the piston uh, to make sure if here the gap for the oil rings does it go over does it overlap or not because if it does uh, you want you would have to install the connecting rods first and then installed um, and then install the uh, oil rings because uh, since they are overlapping let's say this is a compression ring, but it's just uh, for the sake of the demonstration. Let's say I put it here, you see it doesn't overlap. But in some piston uh, setups uh, for like very high compression rates or just the design of the, the piston, in some cases it goes all the way to here or there. So if I have this here, I won't be able to put the piston ring. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to put the, the piston uh, pin or pin, whatever it's called. So you want to do that first and then install the oil rings and work your way to the top. In my case, it is not. So I'll be able to put the rings and then take my time and install the connecting rods properly, loop the insides and the pin as well and install them with the connecting rod. So I'll try to take a picture of this chart and show it to you in a better quality, like in high definition or something, or so just so you can follow along. In that case, um, for the gap, so since I know that the bore is an 83 millimeter and we wanna work in inches, uh, you have to start by dividing it by 25.4, which, uh, which will give you a, a certain number, and I'm gonna put all the, the numbers on the screen and everything. So, and then you're gonna use that number and multiply it by the chart that is here. Uh, I'm gonna put that as well um, in the video. So, like I said, the second ring should always be a bit bigger. So the, the numbers on the right for the second ring is a bit bigger. And you're gonna choose the application you're using it for. In my case, it's a high performance street strip car. So I'm not building a drag car, race car or anything and obviously not a dirt ATV or snowmobile. So that's how you're gonna do your uh, math. It's pretty straightforward to be honest. And for the rest here, it, it shows you how you're supposed to put in the openings for every gap on the piston and showing you that this is the engine front which means and this is the 
the piston pin center line, which means the intake valve will be here, exhaust valve will be here. If you're not certain, in 99.9% .9 in the cases, the intake valves are always bigger. So bigger grooves here would be the intake that way. So if we were to compare with the chart, you see the pin here, so it would be that way. So I'd have to, to make sure that the oil rail top gap is here, the bottom gap, uh, the oil rail bottom gap is here, the second compression ring gap is here, and the top one is over here. And always make sure that the oil ring expander gap is over here too. This is this is gonna help you make sure that the car is in losing compression, is in burning oil, or just having a bad compression rate, and uh, that you're not gonna also blow out all of your seals. So you wanna make sure that everything's followed properly. A very important step that some people tend to forget is uh, for the oil ring expander. So I hope the camera is gonna pick it up. So you see here, uh, um, okay. So you see here, you want these two, uh, to the, these two ends to be facing the top. If you see them that way. Here, you see the small grooves are facing down, that's not what you want, you want them to be facing up, that way. It's very important to follow this, that's simply how it is, and uh, make sure also to not, uh, to not bend these, since they are extremely thin, very easy to bend, and when you bend them, uh, you're gonna pretty much have to buy a a new set of rings just to make sure or at least one expander ring but most of the time the manufacturer won't sell you just one so you're gonna have to buy a, a full set so to save up some money and uh, save up some time as well preparation is key whenever uh, you're building an engine and um, it's very important to follow the steps as well in some cases like I told you, you have the small circles, like the dents, not the dents, but the indents in them. And you also have bevel sides as well on the inner or outside sides, depending on the, on the setup you're running. So you wanna make sure you're following that as well. It's gonna tell you second top ring, top ring. It's gonna also show you, of, let's say, uh, the, the piston rings do not have the marking that I just showed you, that one here. If they are unmarked, then you need to do this, you need to do that. So it really depends on the, uh, on the kit you're buying. And also, I'm gonna show you now, whenever you're gapping the rings, it's extremely important to make sure uh, that the grooves, the two sections of the piston rings are parallel. They, they need to do, they won't, they, they won't be good if they have any kind of angle, if they're crooked, you pretty much need to buy an, another set. You absolutely need to make sure that they are flush and make sure to remove all burrs and sharp edges as well. It's written here and over there. It's very important and it can lead to some damage as well for your sleeves.